All right, everyone, given that it is a pretty big, some would say defining week for Celtic on the pitch, and that as a channel, we are certain to hit 35,000 subscribers today. I thought we could do something a wee bit different for today's video and make it a little bit of an Ange special. Certainly centred around Ange, I guess most of the videos we do are. We did this kind of thing uh, around about a year ago. It is linked there at the top. Basically, what we're going to do is take a look at what certain people in the world of football are saying about Ange and I guess Celtic as well. Very quote heavy, as you would expect, but some interesting stuff from some interesting people. I'm not going to mess around today because we've got a lot to get through. We're going to play the intro sting and then get into it and we are beginning with Lee Johnson for some reason. Back in late December, after we dismantled his hip side 4 0 at Easter Road, Johnson chose to pay tribute to this uh, fantastic Celtic team. He has managed down south uh, in the English Championship, for example. He's gone up against a couple of the big guns down there in the various cup competitions, most notably Man City. And he thinks that Celtic stack up pretty well against anything he's come up with, perhaps with the exception of Pep Guardiola's side. He said, Celtic are a top team. I've managed against English Premier League teams and Celtic are maybe one of the best sides bar Manchester City that I've come across. Celtic have obviously got a challenge in trying to bridge the gap to the super elite teams in the Champions League, but at the moment they are way above anything else in the Scottish Premiership, in my opinion. Now, Liam Fox was one of Dundee United's nine managers so far this season, and he was another one that failed to live with Celtic domestically. There's nothing um, really to be too ashamed about there. But he did, um, again, speak very positively after our game at the start of 2023 about Celtic and about Ange, and more specifically, spoke about some valuable time spent with Ange Postacoglu. Ange has been really good with me. I had a really good chat with him before and after the game at Parkhead, which was good of him. He is a top manager, is in charge of a top squad and has worked at the highest level. Whenever you get somebody like that to give you five minutes, then you need to make the most of it. Ange just told me to be clear in your mind of what you want and how you want your team to play and go with it. He is a really good guy and was happy to pass on some words of advice. Now, as we turn this into a more global affair, A-League legend, I'm going to say, Bezar Berisha, is just starting out his coaching career, but he says Ange has already had a big impact on his coaching journey. Berisha, who is uh, a Kosovo and Albania international, only recently retired from football. He is the A-League's all-time leading goal scorer, if you didn't know that. And speaking re recently to Aussie outlet Keep Up about Ange's success at Celtic, he said, This is incredible. This should be, for Australia, the goal, the way Ange is doing in Celtic. Watching now as a young coach, seeing how tough this world is as a coach, it is not easy to achieve such a success like Ange has at Celtic and win the title in Scotland and play a Champions League and be unlucky in Champions League. This is a dream. This is what the goal for every young coach. Not quite sure who uh, typed that interview up, but um, yeah. Another Australian football figure, John Aloisi, I'm going to go with, credited Ange with opening doors for Aussie coaches looking for a chance in Europe. I think sometimes when we very much got the kind of Celtic hat on, I don't actually have a Celtic hat, well I do actually. When we've got that Celtic hat on, we do kind of tend to forget how much of a trailblazer Ange is, so it's nice to see quotes like this from Aloisi. Now speaking to a uh, wide world of sports late last year, he said. Ange has opened doors for, I believe, more Australian coaches going overseas and doing well and showing what we're capable of doing. 
We did it as players, so I can't see why we can't do it as managers and coaches. We love the game, we are very knowledgeable about the game, and our work ethic is second to none. And to be a top manager, I think you have to have that work ethic. It's exciting because it gives everyone belief that hopefully one day they can manage at a top European level and around the world, and that's what we're all striving for. Now, Harry Kuehl is an Aussie that we'll all be a little bit more familiar with. He is getting first-hand experience of what Ange is like, given that he is working at Celtic right now uh, for Ange. I'm going to go with for rather than with. I know Ange had a wee kind of cheeky comment about six months ago when he said that Kuehl works for him. Certainly um, having a wee joke there, but probably a little bit of... Uh, meaning in that as well. Kuehl has spoken a fair bit about Ange recently. In fact, we had quotes from him just last week on the channel, but I was drawn to these quotes from maybe about six months ago from a chat with Football Coaches Australia. On Ange, Kuehl said, what I like about him most is that he's done it the hard way where no one's backed him. I quite like that. That Aussiness, that toughness, that grit to keep going and believe in yourself. When I first was going in there, it was like, wow, I knew how we played or roughly how we played. I thought it was going to take me a couple of weeks to understand the movements and all that. It took me two days. I know football, I understand football, but the way he makes it, explains it, the way he shows it, it's simple. It's really simple and it amazes me if you get it wrong all you have to do is listen because that's how easy he makes football. I find that quite interesting because like, for fans watching the way we play, I would say it's quite a complex game plan with certain players playing in certain positions. But it's interesting to hear Q and I think a few other people, play, players of Ange have spoken about how simple he makes it. I guess maybe part of that comes down to you having your own job and if you do your job and everyone does their own job, then it should come together for the team. But it's, uh, it's, it's really good to hear just how simple it is because when you watch it in the pitch, it doesn't really look simple. I mean, simple to me would be keeper gets it and punts it long, not two centre-backs drop in and get the ball and then hold the midfielder shows and full-backs tuck in and winger. It's just... Yeah, very simple, but Angie's clearly doing an amazing job. Scott Brown is another recently retired player, now making strides as a manager. He was back up in Scotland recently. We even had a press conference with him on the channel, and he was asked about Ange and even, um, predictably, some comparisons between Ange's uh, current team and Brendan Rodgers' Invincibles, of which he was part. Brown said... Whether you go to the 90th minute or the 97th minute, you have to have that belief and drive in you that you want to win the game. The lads have fantastic energy and Ange has them playing some great football as well. To watch the games and see the flows and patterns and rotations, it's great to watch. I take a lot from Celtic as well. I have learned a lot over the years through a lot of great managers. Just watching Ange and how the lads play, I am still learning. I'm a young manager and want to learn as much as I possibly can in a short period of time. Brown's former teammate, Kieran Tierney, also spoke about Celtic a few months ago. The Hoops favourite told Sun Sport, What Celtic have done and are doing just now is amazing. I was gutted for them in the Champions League. I felt they deserved so much more for their performances. It's a journey they're on in Europe. It's a bit like Arsenal, steady progress. People can see where you're going, what you're trying to do. Ange Postacoglu's bought right into the club. That's why the fans love him. He's adored. My friends talk about him, certain clips, certain interviews. Even when he wears a certain jumper, people are buying it. You can tell how much he's loved. Clearly angling for a move back to Celtic there to be Greg Taylor's understudy. Sorry, Alexandro Bernabe. Um, I, I do actually, going off topic, I do think Tierney will come and play for Celtic again in his career. Um, I don't know, maybe season 20, 35, he'll finish his career with us. And we'll be going for 15 in a row at that stage. Hello, 2036, if you're watching this. How's the flying cars? Eddie Howe is a touchy subject for me as long-term 
viewers of the channel will be all too aware. Well, I've made a fair few mistakes in my time <laughs> buying that, maybe right up there. Um, <laughs> but generally, we should be very happy when mentioning him because he is really the man we should be thanking for having Ange Postacoglu. Had how not been able to assemble his staff and take on the Celtic job in the summer of 2021. We would never have had the joys of Ange. We would never have had Kyogo, Hitate, Maida, other players as well that Ange just signed. So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine all of that. But how is doing a, a brilliant job at Newcastle? They could well be in the Champions League group stage next season, possibly alongside Celtic. I think the pots would maybe mean we couldn't play them, but it'd be pretty fun if we did have Howe v Ange going on at some stage. Anyway, Howe is clearly a big fan of Ange like the rest of us. Speaking a wee while ago, now after a derby last season, Howe said, I think he's done an incredible job. I did actually watch the game on Sunday. It was a very interesting game. The atmosphere is always electric and are very interesting games to watch from a coach's point of view. Full credit to him, his staff and players for what he's done this season because it was a team in slight transition and I think he's been excellent in recruitment. Slight transition, Eddie. Right you are. Right, I bet you weren't expecting to hear uh, DDA Agat's name mentioned in this video, but the uh, former Celtic fullback spoke very glowingly about Ange a number of months ago as well, saying the charisma of Postacoglu is very important for Celtic. He is a leader. He reminds me of Martin O'Neill and the way he was during my time at the club. It is incredible what he has achieved and he has done it all without bringing any of his own coaches with him too. That is very unusual in football, but he has shown he is a top-class manager and I can only see more success for Celtic this season. Jesse Marsh is another person who may well have managed Celtic in the past in another world, may well be in contention for Celtic jobs in the future. He's currently unemployed, left Leeds United probably a few months ago, but when he was Leeds boss at the start of the season... His uh, side took on Ange's old employer's Brisbane Roar in a friendly down under and Marsh was more than happy to wax lyrical about Ange. I'm a big admirer of Ange. I think the work he has done in Australia, in Japan and then in Scotland has been really, really good. What a great first year he had with Celtic. I love seeing people challenge themselves, have clear ideas, have teams that play in a very distinct manner and stay true to their identity they want to represent. Whatever style you have, if you can have an identity, it is inspiring. And even away from high-profile personnel like Tierney, Howe and Marsh. The tactics behind Ange Ball seem to be making more headlines recently. I don't know if you've kind of noticed this as well. In the past fortnight, we've had two pretty high-profile tactics pages posting about our system and how it's brought us success. Well-known outlet The Coach's Voice tweeted this about a Celtic-based article last week. We also had popular account EBL, which has over 100,000 followers, tweeting about Celtic's tactics under Ange. So things are heating up and more and more people are wanting to find out about what's going on at Celtic under Ange. Now, obviously, this season we've still got like the treble and that to be won, but I think in terms of um, the profile of Ange at Celtic and how the team is perceived and and creating more waves, the obvious answer next season is to do well in Europe. Victory over Rangers this Saturday will mean that the title is effectively ours and therefore that Champions League group stage football will be secured for next campaign. And that is going to be massive. So it's a big game this weekend and that's how we're going to finish today's video. We'll have our big match preview dropping on Friday. Speak to you then.